Okay. Welcome to your 12th session of the online tutorial session. And today we're going to continue and do activities based on study unit six, which is normal distribution. Do you have any comments, question, query? Any, anything you wanna share? Anything? Uh, except for the flames I saw on the assignment too. Um, this thing is a lot of work, but I have to catch up and retry it again. I'm sure I'm going to send you more questions after that. Okay. So remember, you can always rewatch the recordings and go through the activities, and it always w will work best if you practice and do a lot of activities before you attempt to do your assignment questions as well, because then you would have practiced and practiced. And then when you go and look at your assignment question, you might recall some of the things that you have learned while you are practicing. So like sessions, um, sessions like today, the Saturday sessions where I we go through a lot of activities, I also make sure that I, I, I have additional activities that I know that we're not going to cover in class, but they will give you an opportunity to practice. So you need to go through them. If we don't finish everything in one class, you just need to continue do that. Let's have the discussions during the week while you are still practicing and not wait until you have to submit the assignment as well. So please remember this is stats is like math. You have to always constantly practice and practice. And they say also practice makes perfect. So the more you practice, the more you're going to get good at it. Any any other comment or question? If there are none, so let's quickly recap on what we did on Wednesdays, because then everything we've learned on Wednesday is going to form a base for all the work that we're going to be doing today in class as well. So let's refresh our mind. We <clears throat> discussed the basic concepts when it comes to normal distribution. We looked at how we compute the probabilities and remember, we, we looked at the three ways that we can compute probabilities for normal distribution. We said we can find the probability of uh, the standardized normal distribution for a less than a value, or we can find the probability for a greater than a value, or we can find the probability where it, the standardized normal distribution lies between two values. And we learned that if it's for less than, the value on the table is that probability that we're looking for because the table which also shows the positive and the negative contains all the less than probabilities and if we find the probability of a greater than then we need to say one minus the value we find on the table and if it's the probability of the between we've learned that we take the probability of the second part minus the probability of the second uh, of the first part of the value. So if, for example, that one was uh, the standardized normal distribution lies between A and B. So we take, we first go find the value on the table for Z less than B. Then we go find the value of Z less than A. Uh, we've learned the table. We know that the table contains the probability inside. And the Z values at the, at uh, on the outer side, whether at the top or on the left hand side. And we've learned how to use that probability table. We're going to do that as well today. So we learned that uh, continuous probability distribution comes from a continuous variable. And, <clears throat> and we know that a continuous variable is a variable that has been measured. It's like your height, your temperature, 
uh, time taken, things like that. We also learned that with a normal distribution, the curve of a normal distribution takes the shape of a baby shape curve, and the normal distribution is a symmetrical uh, graph which has the mean, the median, and the mode, which are equal. And what we have learned also is that with normal distribution, your mean will give you the, the location of your, your, your data uh, around the mean, and the spread will tell you, uh, or the standard deviation will give you the spread of your data across uh, the mean as well. And we also learned that with a normal distribution, the random variable has an infinite range, which starts from positive infinity to negative infinity, and we know that it will never touch the horizontal line. So it will never, the, the normal distribution graph will, will, will never ever touch the x-axis. And what we also learned is that the values underneath the graph that we see, and we call that the area underneath the curve, it is where we're going to be calculating our probability, and that will be the probability, we call it the area underneath the curve. What we also learned was that when we shift the value of our mean, the graph will move from left to right, and if we change by increasing or decreasing the value of your standard deviation, your graph will be flat or it will be taller. So we say it will be narrower or taller, uh, or it will be flat or shorter, things like that. So by increasing the value of your standard deviation, then it means your graph will be, so when, you're, when you're, your standard deviation increase, your graph will be flat, will be flatter, because the standard deviation will be, the values will be far away from the mean, and if uh, we'll say it's short, uh, flatter or shorter, and if we uh, if we decrease the value of your standard deviation, then we say the graph will be narrower because then it will come closer to the the mean um, value, or we can say it will be tall. Uh, we say it's narrower or it's taller. Um, and what we also learned is because we're working with X units, we want to standardize them in order for us to find the probability. Then we use what we call the Z standardized normal distribution, which is called the Z score or the Z distribution or the Z value. And we know that this Z distribution is distributed or the normal distribution or the Z distribution, which is one and the same thing, it's normally distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. And if we don't have the standard deviation, they would have given you the variance, and we know that the variance is the square root of the standard deviation. So if the standard deviation is one, therefore it means the variance is also equals to one. And we use this formula, which we call the Z value or the Z score to, count, to standardize our values or the values of X, which we we calculate it by say your x value minus your population parameter mean divided by your uh, population standard deviation, uh, uh, standard deviation, and that will give you your standardized normal distribution. And then we use this standardized normal distribution to go and find the probability on the table. And we looked at then an example on how we apply the formula to calculate the standardized normal distribution. And we said, if we're looking for the probability of a less than, depending on where the value is, so if it's uh, the value beyond zero, so like A, so we're looking for the probability that Z is less than A, therefore it means it's everything underneath, below the curve where it is red shaded. And when we use the table, that will be the value we find on the table. We also learned that the table has the negative side and the positive side of the table. And all these tables contains the values of Z less than A. So it means all these probabilities that we find on this table are the probabilities of Z less than a value of A. 
and the value of A will be the Z score. And we learned that always when we calculate the value of Z, we need to leave our value into two decimals because the first two decimals will be on your left and the last decimal, which is six, will be at the top as part of the last de decimal or digit on your table on your left. So we've learned how to use this table and we're going to be using it today also to answer a lot of um, questions. Um, we also learned how to find the probability of a Z less than. So if we have the question uh, stated what we are given, we given the mean, we given the standard deviation, and we are asked to find the probability of X less than 18.6. What we do, we need to standardize that value of X by applying the formula and substituting the values that we are given. And we found that the Z value is 0 0.12. And in terms of the probability on the table, we're going to take our Z value of 0 0.12. We go to the left and look for 0 0.1. And we go to the top and look for 0 0.002. And where they both meet, that is the probability that we are looking for. And that's how we use the table. <clears throat> We also learned about the probability of a greater than a value. And we said for a probability that Z is greater than A, we're going to say one minus the value we find on the table because we know on the table, we always have the values of a less than. So we know since the, pro the sum of all probabilities are equals to one, so then it means the probability of Z greater than of Z greater than A is a complement of the probability of Z less than A. And we know that the less than A is the value we can find on the table. OK, we looked at an example to say if we are given the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 5, and we need to find the probability that X is greater than 18, We've done the previous exercise and we calculated the Z value and we knew that our Z value was 0, 0,1. Therefore, to find the complement of, zero com of Z greater than 0, 0,1, we say 1 minus the probability of Z less than 0, 0,12 because we know that this 0, 0,12, we can find it on the table. So we say 1 minus 0, 0,5478 give us the probability of 0, 0,4522. And that is the probability of between. So, sorry, the probability of greater than. So then we also looked at the probability of between, and we said if Z lies between two values, then we're going to take the value that we find on the table for the Z less than B and subtract. So we'll say the probability of Z less than B minus the probability of Z less than A because we know that Z less than A is the value that we will find on the table, and Z less than B is the value we find on the table, and we're going to subtract one from the other, and that will give us that probability of between. We looked at an example where we were given the mean, the standard deviation, and we were told that uh, we need to find the probability that X lies between 18 and 18.6. We first calculated the Z value for 18, and we calculated the Z value for 18.6, and we found that uh, the answer for Z was 0, and the answer for Z for 18.6 was 0 0.12, and we're going to say the probability of Z less than 0 0.12, we go find the value on the table minus the probability of Z less than 0 0.00 on the table. And that's what we do. We go to the table, we go look for the probability of 0 0.0, 0 0.12, and we find that it is 0 0.05478, and we go find the probability of 0, 0, we go find 0, 0, and we find that it is 0 0.055, 500, then we subtract one from the other, and the probability of between, which is only the shaded area, is just 0, 0,0478. And that is the probability of between. Not only that we learned how to find the probability of between, the probability of greater than, and the probability of less than, we also learned 
to work backwards. By working backwards, we learned that sometimes they might ask you to find the value of x from, you can use the formula of z, x, sorry, z, x minus the mean divide by the standard deviation. If we are asked to find the value of x and therefore it means they would have given us the value of z or the value of standard deviation or the value of the mean. If they didn't give us that, then they would have given us the probability and they would, told, they would have told us what is the sign, whether it is a greater than or whether it's a less than or whether it is between, so that we can find the value of x by working backwards. And we looked at one of the examples where we were given the probability that your x is less than when your x is less than 20%, which is 0 0.020, and that probability was, oh, sorry. Uh, that probability, the x where it's less than, uh, I'm, I'm going to, to say that, yes. Find x that such that so we know what the value we don't know what the value of x is so we we need to know what what will be that probability where x is less than the value it will give us 0, 0,02 percent so then it means since we know that this 20 percent they would have found it by finding the z of less than a value which we need to go find on the table, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,0,0,0,0. So we need to go and find this probability on the table. And since we know that we're working with the actual table, because it, we're looking for the probability of a less than, we go to the table, we find the value of Z, and we replace it by uh, that value that we find on the table. So if the 0, 0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,
a normal distribution curve never touches the horizontal axis. True. True. That is correct. A normal distribution has two parameters, namely the mean and the variance. False. Why? Why is it false? It has two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation. I'm not sure. It has the mean and the standard deviation. So where do you find the standard deviation? From the variance. From, From the variance. The variance. So it also yeah. can, can still be one of those because the variance is the square root. So your standard deviation is the square root of your variance and your variance is the square of your standard deviation. So this statement is true. If they would have yes. said it contains the median, that then that would have made it incorrect. OK, and number five, the shape and the position of a normal distribution depends on the mean and the variance. Is that correct? It's true. That is true. As long as the mean, we know that it makes your graph move from left to right, depending on where your sorry, my my mean was not supposed to touch the the y the x axis. That is the mean. It will shift from left or right, and your standard deviation, which we will calculate from the variance, will make your flatter or higher or more Something narrow. Like yes, so that your 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 standard deviation makes your your graphs to go up and down in terms of the uh, in terms of the shape. Um, so the mean moves it in terms of the position, but the standard deviation or the variance will move it in terms of the shape, which now leaves us with only number two. So number two says the area under the normal standard deviation for Z less than a zero is equals to one. So if you are not sure about this question, you can also go to your table I need to go to the Z table. You can go to the Z table and look at how the Z table looks. So remember, let's go back here. It says where Z is less than zero. Ne? So therefore we expect Z to be less than 0, 0, 0,00. So you go to the table and you look for Z, so this is in the negative, so we must go to the positive side. Sorry, I scroll too much. We go to the positive side and we go look for 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The probability or the area underneath that curve should give us 50%. Or 0, 0,005. So if we go back to our question, it says is equals to one. Therefore, that is the incorrect answer. And that's how you can um, answer questions like that. Otherwise, if you don't want to use the actual table, you can also look at the graph. If you look at it, here is your zero. So we know that the area underneath the calf, the area underneath the curve should always be equals to one because it's the sum of all probabilities will always be equals to one. But if it's half where zero is, so and it's less than, so we're only talking about 50% of the whole area. We're not talking about the entire area, so therefore it means this will be 0, 0,5. Or in terms of probabilities in four decimal, it will be just 0, 0,500 0, 0. because the no standardized normal distribution or cumulative standardized normal distribution is the cumulative probabilities. 
OK, so that's how you will answer questions. Moving forward. The distribution for which the mean is equal to the median is equal to the mode is a. Which one is the answer? Symmetrical. Symmetrical distribution. Symmetrical distribution. That will be the answer because a normal distribution has the mean, the median, and the mode, and it is a, a symmetrical distribution. Uh, Ms. Bruce, I assume also the distribution can be skewed since only symmetrical applies. Yes. So a a multimodal uh, distribution will look like like that. It will have two modes. A skewed distribution will look like that because then it's skewed to the left on this manner for this one. A uniform distribution will be. That will be your uniform distribution. We, learn, we will learn about uniform distribution when we do the sampling distribution because the sampling distribution, we convert this uniform distribution to becoming a symmetrical distribution, which is a normal. I'm not drawing it correctly, but you get the gist of it, a normal distribution. So we can convert this to that. We can also convert that to that. We can also convert it to that. And that's what we do in statistics when we want to do some analysis and infer back the results. We make sure that all our numerical values, we conform them and they become normally distributed. It makes it easier for interpretation and also for application purpose. Okay. But that is for those who are interested in being in the same environment as me and being statisticians. OK, so now let's learn how to do the probabilities. For a random variable z from the standard normal distribution with the mean of 0 and the standard deviation of 1, that just describes the normal distribution. Which one of the following is incorrect? So I'm going to give you five minutes to go through each one of this and then post in the chat your option. Which one is the correct option? But you need to go and, and, and work it out. So we can do one together now, and then you can do the rest on your own. So the first one, which says the probability of Z less than minus 1.52. So we need to go to the Z table and go to the negative side of the Z table. Remember, it says it's negative 1.6, so we don't have to calculate the Z values here. We are given the Z, so we just use the table. We look for 1.5. It is right here at the bottom, and we look for 2. It's in this column. Sorry. 2 is in this column, and that probability is 0, 0,0643. And going back to our question, so I'm hoping you all have your 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 tables with you so that you can work through all the responses. Yeah. And we are looking for the incorrect one. So already now, with my help, this is correct. So check if any one of them are incorrect. You have five minutes, and I will set the timer. Please post in the chat also uh, when you get to the option. Ms. Liz, yes. by any chance, would you know what page is the table on the study guide? In your normal distribution chapter, it should be in there somewhere. 121. Okay. 120. Thank you. There you go.
Okay. Time's up. Must be, I think it's fast. Yes. If I interpret it correctly. So you say you calculated it and you found that it is five. Let's see five. what others are saying. Uh, I have one person saying it's four. Four is the incorrect one. So let's see if four is the incorrect one. Um, so we're going to go to the table. I'm going to make my screen. Oh, sorry. Go out of the presentation mode. And I'm going to make it smaller. So that we can have the table as well on the view. Okay, I'm going to make it bigger. Is it visible? Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so let's, we know that number one was correct. Let me activate my pen. Number one was correct. So let's look at number two. Number two says Z less than 1.4. So we need to go to the positive side of the table. Scroll too much. So we're looking for one, 1.48. So we go to 1.4 on the side. And we need to go to the last. Two is correct. Yeah, it is right. Which is 0 0.396, which is correct. Then the next one says we need to find the probability of greater than minus 0 0.43. So here we first need to do one minus the value we will find on the table. Né? So we go to the negative side since we're looking for the negative side. And we're looking for 0 0.4, which is this. And if I count, this is 0, 1, two, three, we should be there. So that column, 0 0.43. So the three is in the last, in that column. So 0 0.43 is zero. So we need to say 0 comma three, 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 six. So we need to subtract one minus 0 comma 336 and that should give us 0, 0,6646. Correct. Ne? Um, Ms. Pui, mm -hmm. so I just did it the other way around. Please tell me if it was right. So instead of going to negative, having a bigger than negative number, I just converted to 0, 043 as a positive number. And then I used it a positive size of the side of the table. So yes. instead of going minus 0333, which is the value from the negative side, I just left the Z as sort of, I, I just inverted the rank. So I made a negative and 0 43 as positive. Yes. So you, you will find that it will be correct. Yeah, it is correct. That's why. Uh, or is it incorrect that way doing it? No, it's not incorrect. So you, you um, if you go to the positive side of this table, mm -hmm. remember here is negative. So if you go to the positive side of this, remember the sum of all probabilities it equals to one. Yeah. So in, in the positive side, 0 0.43 will be bigger than the negative side. And the sum of yeah. both of those will give you uh, 
will give you the the it will give you one. So, but if you come here and you say subtract, then it it will also give you the same as in the positive side. So it, you can use both ways. You can either come to the negative and then do the minus, or you can go to the positive and the value you find on the positive will be the value you are looking for. So it's a step shorter, basically. It's a shorter one, yes. Yeah, OK, yes. cool. Thank you. So as long as your answer will be 0, 0,66. 664, yeah. 664. So number four, it says the value is greater than 0, 0,74. So now it means we need to go to the positive side. Positive side. Because it's greater than, we can also say 1 minus. The value we'll find on the positive. Let's start with that one, the normal way. The value we find on the positive where it's 0, 0,7. So that is 0, 0,7 on the first. And the last digit is 4. So we need to go to 4, which is 0, 0,7704. So that will be 1 minus 0, 0,7704 which then gives us 1 minus 0 0.7704, which gives us 0 0.22, 0 0.2296. Therefore, this is the incorrect answer. But let's go to the next one. Oh, let's, let's do your method. So because this is positive, so we need to go to the negative side of the table to find 0, 0,74. So when we go to the negative side, 0, 0,7, and we go to 4. So we know 4 is on that column, so I can also count from here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that will give us the same answer as when we do 1 minus 0, 0,774 because we came to the negative. So the inverse of that, yeah, the alternative of that. That's correct. So when we look at this two, the last one, we need to go find the probability of Z less than 2.34 on the table. And we need to go find the probability of Z less than minus 2.34. 70 on the table. So the first one, we go to the pos to the positive side. We look for 2.70, which is 0, 0,9965 minus, and we go to the negative side to look for. Oh, sorry, I went to the wrong one. That's the wrong one. We're looking for 2.36. 2.30123456, which is that yes. Thing. yes. I think it's 2.34, not 36. Oh, gosh. 34. Yes. 34. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 0, 0,9904. So we go 0, 0,9904 minus. We need to go to the negative side, look for minus 2.70. Negative side, let's remove all this previous answers we got. That's and we 0 0.0034. 2.7. Yeah. And 2.7. So 0, 0.0034. 0 0.0035. So when you do the calculation, will be 0 0.9904 minus 0 0.0035 gives yeah, you 0 0.9869, which is correct. So the only incorrect one is option four. Yes. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Sorry, it works best when you you work on PowerPoint slides. Okay, so say I 
I'm going to do number one. So since remember, we're working with cumulative probability. So if we're looking for the probability of an exact, you are going to get the probability of an exact will be equals to zero. So for this one, it is correct. We're looking for the incorrect one, just to make sure that we have the right question. We're looking for the incorrect statement. Yeah, I think now it's much better. Remember to post on the chat when you have the option. So you have, let me just not give you five minutes, uh, four minutes. Let me give you three minutes on this one. Are we done? Yes, we are done. Okay. What will be the probability of Z greater than zero? 0 0.5. That will be 0 0.5 anyway. I don't even have to go to the table to show you because the probability of 
z equals to zero on the positive side is just 0 0.5. Therefore, it means the probability of z will also be of z greater than 0 0.5. It's 1 minus 0 0.5, which is the same as 0 0.5. The probability of Z less than zero? 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Okay. Don't, it, also, I don't have to explain that. Number four, the probability of Z less than minus one negative minus one so we need to go to the negative side and go look for minus so this will be minus 1.00 so we'll need to look for 1.0 on the left and zero at the top so that will be 0 0.15 Eight seven, correct? Yes. yes. Next one. Correct. Then it means the probability of a of an exit cannot be zero. I thought probability of Z is equal to zero is 0 0.5. Correct me if I'm wrong. No. It's not equals to zero. It's not equals to 0 0.5. Remember, the table that you are looking at, it looks at the probability of exact. Uh, Wait, the probability of an exact is equal to zero. Yes, that is correct. The table that we're looking at right now looks at the cumulative probabilities. So this does not have the probability of an exact value. And as you can see that the probability of a negative one is almost like equals to zero. It's zero comma zero 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 zero. So the probability of an exact as well will be equals to zero because you're looking for the probability at that point. Let's look at number five. Number five says the probability of Z greater than one. So we need to go to the probability of Z one in the positive is zero comma that is 0, 0,8413, but we need to subtract one from that because this is the probability of a less than. And that will give us one minus 0.8413 gives us 0, 0,15. Eight, seven. Now we need to go find the probability of one minus the probability of z less than minus one. It's also number four there. It's calculated. So z minus one, we did find it. It was zero comma one five eight seven minus one so this question says the probability this site should be equal to the probability that site and we know this probability this site will be equals to 0, 0,8413 so these two are not equal so this is the incorrect one okay i've seen my mistake i used if positive they, one instead of negative one yeah if they didn't put if they didn't put this value one minus the probability of a less than equals to that, then it would have been correct. Or if this was positive, then it would have been correct. 
but because this side it's a negative one and it's one minus the probability of a negative one and makes this one is the incorrect question so you always need to know that for a standardized normal distribution the probability of an equal will be equals to zero the probability of a greater than we use the cumulative probabilities okay next You see this question says if the z i must take it back to bigger screen now so that we can see if the z score is given by z of less uh, z equal z standardized normal distribution z value of minus 1.96 the distribution of X is normally distributed with the mean of 40, the standard deviation of 5, then what is the value of Z? All you need to do is use your Z equals your X minus the mean table formula to find the value of X. So that's what we need. Calculate the value of X. You are given the Z value. You are given the mean, you are given the standard deviation. And remember to post your answer on the chat. And if you agree with the option, Are we winning? Okay. We have two different answers. Uh, so I don't know where, uh, how did you get to that answer? But anyway, let's substitute and calculate. What is the value of Z? One point nine six. It's minus one point nine six. The value of X is what we're looking for. The mean minus forty is forty. The standard deviation five. is five. five. We can multiply both I've sides. Seen by my five. Minus one point nine six. Multiply by five this side, and we will be left with minus x minus 40 on the other side. And your minus 1.96 multiply by five gives us minus 9.8. Minus 9.8 and we take 40 this side, it becomes plus 40. X will be equals to 9.1, 9.8 plus 40 equals to 30.2. Yes. Which makes option one the correct one. Happy? Yes. Yes. Good. Next, the owner of an appliance store 
uses a normal distribution with the mean of 10. This variance, which is sigma squared of 9, to model the weekly net sales. Calculate the probability that x is less than 3.5. What is the standard deviation? 3. The standard deviation is the square root of the variant, which is equal to 3. And we need to calculate the probability that x is less than 3.5. So you need to find the probability that z, because we're doing standardized substitute the values i'm just writing the formula for you you just continue Are we done? Or oh, you want a minute? Talk to me. Done. Okay, so let's do this. Talk to me. Z less than, what is my X? Three point five. Three point five minus. Ten. Divide by nine. I mean, divide by three. Divide by three. By three. And that will give us the probability that Z is less than 3.5 minus 10 gives you minus 6.5. 6 divide by three. The probability that Z is less than what is 6.5 divided by three gives you 2.1666. The value minus, of two minus negative yeah. minus minus two two point one six two point one six six round it to two decimals two point one seven. seven remember to always round it to two decimals so that you can use it to go find the probability on the table so let's go find the probability on the table We're looking for 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 
2.17 and that is 7 there so the probability is 0, 0,0150 which is option 5 let's see who got it right Tito and whoever liked their answer happiness yep Final mark shows a normal distribution with the mean of 56 and the standard deviation of 4%. What is the probability that a random chosen student fails the module? What are we given here? We're given the, the mean. mean. We're given the standard deviation, right? What yes. else are we given? There is something that we are given. We are told that we need to find the probability of X. Oh, not, yes. What will be the probability that a chosen student will fail the module? So, so what do they mean? If they fail a module, then is it a greater than or is it a less than? Or is it an equal? It's a less than. And when it's a less than, since we're working with percentages of pass, so what is the percentage of a pass? 50. So the student should get less than, less than 0, 0,5, ne? 0, 0,5. So that's what they want. So you need to calculate the probability of a student getting less than 0, 0,5. And that will be the probability that Z is less than X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, are we still busy? Sla lady posted her option and there's a one like. Others? I'm confused. What are you confused about? Uh, I'll need to take you back again. Why do we standardize? Why do we find Z? So that we can find the probability. Now, when I'm looking at our probability that we have, there is already 0 0.5. No, that is not the probability. That is a pass mark. Why aren't we supposed to say X is less than 50? 
No. Yeah? Yes. Because 50 is your pass mark. It's not your probability. It doesn't tell you the probability of student failing. It gives you the pass mark. It's like... So that is that is the amount let's say let's say we're not working with percentages here we're talking about uh the number the actual number so let's say it's 56 it's four percent and then it's 50. okay so we use x as 50. yes okay i use 0 0.5 yes it's 0 0.5 because it's 50 50 percent a pass mark is 50%, which is 0 0.5. But that is uh, if I, but if that I use 0 0.5 for my X now, it's the one that confuses me. No, it doesn't come you, need, you need to also to convert your mean because your mean is 56%. What is 56%? Oh. Is 0 0.56. What is 4%? 4 yes. 0 0.04. Yes. So you need to convert it to decimals. Okay. Are we done? Our Z, our X is 0 0.5 minus our mean of 0 0.56 standard deviation of 0 0.04. One point minus four. I mean, minus one point five. Z minus one point five zero. If we go to the table. Is it, is it, yo, sorry, wait, my bad. So you said it 0 0.05, yo, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.56 is 0 0.06. Divide by 0 0.04 gives you minus 1.50, ne? So we go to the table. Yes. And what do we get? Zero. One. Zero point zero. And zero point zero six six eight. which is option number number one. Next, the probability that Z is greater than minus 1.96 is denoted by the probability of Z greater than minus 1.0 and it is equal so you need to go find the probability so what do we need to do here z greater than minus 1.96 what do we need to do one minus the probability that z is less than 1.9 negative 1.96 yes 
So go find the probability of Z less than 1.96. which is equal to 0 0.0250 and get the answer. What is the answer? 0 0.0975. Which is number two. two. The average high school teacher annual salary is 43,000. Let the teacher salary be normally distributed with the standard deviation of 18,000. Calculate the probability that X is greater than 80,000. So you need to find the probability that X is greater than 80,000, which is one minus the probability that Z is less than X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I just made it easier for you. That's the alternative way of doing it because we know eventually we will find the probability of one minus that because of the greater than. I'm going to give you some few minutes. Uh, let's say two minutes to answer the question. Okay, are we done? So, one minus the probability that Z is less than our X is 80,000 minus our mean, which is 43,000. 
and our standard deviation of 18,000. And that will be one minus the probability that Z is less than, <clears throat> did you calculate it? What is 80,000 minus 43? 37,000. 37,000 divided by 18,000. 2.0555, so you One round minus. it up. Z of less than 2.0555, which means it will be 06. Zero six. Six. Yeah. Okay. Since we're looking for the probability and not the Z value, because you were going to choose the Z value, you're not going to get it right. So we need to go to the table and go look for the Z of less than 2,0. So we go to the table and it's in the positive side, so it's positive 2.06. So we go to the positive side and Two point zero six. Am I still on the right lane? Zero comma nine eight zero three. Easy, ne? That's very easy to do. There is no complex questions other than everything that we have done. So let's just continue for the next 30 minutes to see how many questions we can cover. There are still plenty more. The state's final mark is normally distributed with the mean of 56. And yes. Can you kindly go back to the previous question? Yeah, I am. Um, did you once you've got the uh, z value did you subtract the minus one <gasps> you are right and everybody else is quiet no we didn't we didn't i was, I was trying to finish the calculation i only picked up that you moved on while i was busy. ah yes so we we would have also got it wrong there you are right yo we nearly made a very woo -guga mistake. Goo -goo -goo mistake. A big, big one. Um, so yes, you need to subtract it from one. I don't know why I forgot because I always carry the one. One minus 0 0.9803. The answer should be 0, 0.0196 which is option five. So we would have gotten it all wrong in the exam that cost four marks. So, so, so four I marks think it's one. wrong. Yeah. I actually got it right, but but I think that's because I swapped the the, the, the X and the mean. I swapped around when I did the calculation. So I got the answer of 0 0.0197. No. So I, I don't know. Yeah. So in the exam, we would have gotten minus four. Oh, that's a huge, that's huge, that's huge. Okay, thank you for that. Let's move on to the next question. What is the final mark obtained by a student if the Z score value is equal to minus 0, 0,5? So they want to know what is the X value? So you need to use the formula like we said with the other one, x minus the mean divide by the standard deviation. Find x. In short, you can write the formula multiplies 
can say x is your z multiplied by standard deviation plus the mean. So we just multiply z, we take the mean over, and then you just substitute into that formula. <clears throat> And the answer you, you just need to multiply by a hundred. When you're done, just multiply by a hundred to get it to a percentage. Multiply by a hundred, and that will give you the answer you are looking for. Are we winning? Slow lady and two other people says it's option five. Others agree. Let's see if we agree with them. Our Z is minus 0.5 times our standard deviation is 4%, which is 0 0.04, plus our mean of 56%, which is 0 0.56. Everything we need to multiply by 100. So X everything zero minus zero comma five negative point five times point zero four gives us minus zero point zero two at that two point Five six, we get zero zero point five, five four six, multiplied five by a hundred gives us x of fifty four percent. Fifty four percent, which is option two. A. <clears throat> you have five minutes to answer this one. Let me set you a clocky so that we don't go over. But actually, let me give you four minutes. I uh, will make noise on this as well. Okay, the, the timer is on.
Okay, time's up. Okay, we have an answer. I'm not going to go through each one of them. Let's see which one. Unless if we have multiple answers. So. Are you still busy or you? Yes, we're still busy, Miss Liz. Are you still busy? Okay, so let's look at the <clears throat> at the answers and see if we can assist those who are still lost. Number one says we need to find the probability of Z greater than 2.64. So it's in the positive side. And we know that we need to say one minus the value we find on the table. So 2.64 is that value. So we'll have to say 0 0.9959. One minus 0, 599 and that is 0, 0,0041 that is correct and we're looking for the incorrect value if I'm not mistaken yes we're looking for the incorrect value so the next one 
says we need to find the probability of Z less than negative 0.87. So we need to go to the negative side table. And we're looking for 0, 0.8, which is just here at the bottom. And it's 87. So we need to count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. It should be here in this column. If I go up, I should be in 7. Ooh, you know. Yes, it's in this column. So 0, 0.87, it's 0, 0.1992, since it's the less than, that is the correct answer. Happiness. The next one, we need to go find the probability of 1.46. So we need to go to the positive side and find 1.40, which is 0, 0,9192, and we need to subtract the value we find in 1,4. Minus 1,4, minus 1,4 is 0, 0,0808. And when we subtract 0.9192 subtract 0 0.0808 gives us 0, 0.8384, which means that is correct. I'm going to jump the first, the fourth one, because I see here they said they agree with the fourth one. So let's go to number five. Number five says, uh, Z of greater than 0, 0,74. This applies to the same thing that we did earlier. So we need to look for 0, 0,74. We find that it is 0, 0, so we need to say 1 minus 0, 0,7. 704 because this is greater than we need to say 1 minus that so when we calculate 1 minus 0, 0.74 we need to find we will find it minus 0. 0.7704 is 0. 0.2296 0. 0.2296 and it should be the same as the Z of less than 0, 0.74. So we go to the negative side and look for 0, 0.7. We look for 0, negative 0, 0.74, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And we find that it is 0, 0.2296. So therefore, this is correct which leaves us with only number four. We need to go to 2.8. Go to 2.8, 2.80, which will be that. And that is the incorrect one. So that is the value that we are looking for. Any questions? We have 10 minutes. If there are no questions, am I here alone? Guys, are you here? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we are here. Yo? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> For a sec there, I thought I am here alone. I'm talking to myself. Okay. If the area to the right 
of a positive Z1 is 0, 0,8996. Then the value of Z is, if the area to the right, so they say, let's say this is the area, they say if this shaded area is 0, 0,0869, what is this value? What is that Z, Z1 value there? So they have given you the probability. They've told you where to look for it. And they tell you it's positive. To the right is a positive. So when they say to the right, therefore they are looking for the greater than. So if they are looking for the greater than, because they say to the right, which is the greater than side, then it means this probability, when we found it, we found the probability of 1 minus 0, 0,0869. So we need to go find the actual probability. And that actual probability is 1 minus 0 0.0869, which is 0 0.9, 0 0.9131. So we need to go to the table and go find this probability on the table. 0 0.9131. So we go to the table. We look for inside this table. We need to look for this 0 0.9. So it will be in the negative uh, in the positive side because they also told us that it's in the positive. So we go look for the positive side of the table. And then we go look for nine, so one, three, six. And the one point three, six. three, six. One point three, six. And that's how you do it. So you need to read the question carefully. So the hint that I used was that they gave us, they said the, the area, we know that the area, they refer to the probabilities underneath the curve. The area is the probability, so that is what one thing, probability. The other thing they told us is that it is to the right, so therefore it means it's to that side, which is to the right, and when it's to the right, then it means it is a greater than, uh, to the left, it would have been a less than. So to the right is a greater than. So that's one thing that you need to remember there. And since they gave us this probability, which is the area, which is the same as that, they told us it's 0 0.8. They wanted us to find the value of Z, which is at this point, which then gives us this cumulative probabilities going there. But the other hint that they tell us is that this value you will find it on the negative side of the table if they would have said negative then we would have went to the negative because then the probability here would have been in the negative side of the table but they said it's in the positive so it's a, in the right greater than and it's a put in the positive area so we'll find it in the positive z value table and we know that if it's greater than the value we find that 0, 0,0869, we would have found it by saying 1 minus 0, 0,9131. So we would have taken this 0, 0,9131, subtracted from 1, and it would have given us that value. Any question? So it must be one question uh, that 0 0.91. Can you just show me again on a on a table, please? Yeah. So you come inside the table, you look for 0 0.9 on the positive side table. 
you you go through you scan through these values like 0 0.99 0 0.98 and you go and until you find the value 0 0.913 which is there because we're looking for the z value we need to read the z values out which is that value 1.3 and the last digit always at the top points uh, 1.36 and that will give us 1,36. And that's how we find that value. So you need to actually go and check for 091 and anything thereafter? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I am going to stop right here for today's session. Every other question that is coming up uh, after this is your homework. Please go through that. Practice with it. Um, and yeah, and let's have a discussion on WhatsApp. Yeah, because I, I think it's always going to be a two way. Let's have a two way communication on WhatsApp because you post, nobody and, um, responds to those questions and I, I just give you feedback, but at least it will help you to, to show you where you're going wrong when you're working out the solutions as well. So I'm going to stop right here. So from question 13, you can answer it. So I'll just give you hints on how to answer some of these questions. So question 13 is asking you to find the shaded area. So this is the probability of between. So we're going to assume that is this is the Z normal distribution uh, values already calculated. So they're giving you 0 and 1,25. So you need to take those two values and find the probability that Z lies between 0 and 1,25. And that will give you an answer from one of those. That's what you need to do because they say, find the area under the curve, and they give you the two Z values. <clears throat> this one straightforward as well, they give you the Z value. They're asking you to find the probability. Go to the table, you know you will say one minus the probability of Z less than minus 1.44 on the table. <clears throat> This one is a little bit more complex, but it's not as complex as you think. It's actually straightforward. They are saying to you that the probability of B, um, X greater than B is that. Here they also give you the probability of a less than. So we know that if we need to find this probability, so therefore the probability of x less than less than b would have been 1 minus 0, 0,017. So we would have found this probability. The only thing that we need now is this probability. So we know that the probability of a less than x less than b is equals to the probability of x less than b minus the probability of x less than a. So that is why I'm saying it is as straightforward as it is. It is. If you don't see it, I don't know what else can I explain it or what other hint I can give you. You just substitute the values and then solve for the probability of a because that's what they're looking for. They want you to find the probability, they want you to find the value of A. So now, once you have found the probability of A, because you would have found the probability of A in on the table, oh, not on the table, using the probability that you will find here after you solve this, then you will go to the table and go find the Z value and then calculate X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and find X because our X in this instance is our A. That's all what you need to do. First step, 
or actually this was supposed to be your first step. Your second step is supposed to find the probability of A. The third step is to go to the table and find your Z value. Your fourth is to find A using this formula. That yeah. will give you the value of A. Just a small confusion on the first step. Mm. Uh, I have an impression that the probability of X greater than E is supposed to be 1 minus uh, that value. Am I wrong? But that is what I have said. Remember, you are looking for the probability of Z less than. So remember the probability of? Okay, so that's why you say saying your confusion is X. Yes. So we know that the probability of Z greater than B is 1 minus the probability of X less than b which is the same as the probability of x less than b is 1 minus the probability of x greater than b these are both complements that is a complement of this and this is the complement of that you can work it out let me blank screen wait let me blank screen the probability of x greater than b is equals to the probability of oh sorry it's equals to one minus one minus the probability of x less than b let's take this value minus minus p to the other side probability of x greater than b plus because it's minus it will be plus x less than b is equals to 1. Now let's take the greater than to the other side. We are left with the probability of x less than b is equals to 1 minus the probability of x greater than b. Can you see that they are complements? One and the same thing. Yeah, okay, I'll have to watch it over and over. Which mm -hmm. makes sense. I'll, I'll ask on WhatsApp if I'm not coming right. Okay. Yeah, I took a shortcut because I'm, I made my assumptions that by now you know how to move from here between the two, between the less than and the greater than. They will mean one and the same. Since we are given the probability of a greater than, then it's easy to find the probability of a less than because it's the probability of X less than B it will be 1 minus the probability of a greater than because it's a complement. And that is why I said that will be your first step. So once you have that probability, you have this probability of between because they've given it to you. There it is. Number two, they have given you that. You would have calculated that. So that, let's change color. I can't change the color. So this, one where I am making a big dot, it is this. The answer that you will get there, it will be that. And then you just solve for this, right? Once you have solved for the probability of less than A, you would have found that that probability, let's say, is 0 0.5847. I'm just making an assumption. You're going to take this value because it's a less than already. So you're going to go to the table. You're just going to come to the table and look for 0 0.58. 0 0.5. I might not find 58 because I just make it up. 5847. 58. Almost. Let's say it's that one. 58332. Let's assume that we pick that one as our probability. Then you're going to say that is 0, 0 0.2. Uh, and what else and one so that is your z value that is what you do in step number three you find that z value then you take this formula which is z is equals to x minus a because we know that we're looking for a as our value we're not going to use z uh, x we can use a in this instance so a minus the mean we have the z we calculate we found it by doing all this step number one, step number two, step number three, we found Z. 
we're looking for A, we found mean, they've given you the mean, they've given you the variance, we just do the standard deviation, which is the square root of your variance. You substitute, you find A. That's one, two, three, four steps. You will find the answer. Okay, that is my hint. Okay, so then you can also answer this as just a normal theory question that you need to go through. You can answer question 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Oh, wait, let's go back to this one as well. So on this one, instead of them putting 52 and 66 into this question, they made them as A and B as that. So you just need to work them out in here. Replace B with 66, replace A with 52. Also, yeah, it's the same thing that we have been doing all along. Remember the probability of equal, but we're looking for the incorrect one and I've already gave you the answer. Okay, let me just move. Um, so this one is easy as well. You just need to calculate the Z score, which means you use the formula Z is equals to X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. This is a normal, uh, theory question and this you just need to calculate your x which means you use z is equals to x minus the mean divided by by the standard deviation as well on this one they are looking for this is a point decimal sorry uh, they are looking for x so you just use z is equals to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. That's what they are looking for, the X value. The last one you just use, oh, it's not the last one. You just also find the probabilities here, like we have been doing. What is the probability that the Z score below 1.5? You can read through the whole sentence, but it's not going to be helpful. The question is just what is the probability of a Z score below? So know what below means. Is it greater than or is it less than? You must know what they mean by below. Uh, and then go to the table and find the probability. That's This is the simplest one question. And that concludes today's session. And any question, any comment, any, anything, now you have a flow. In the absence of any question, any comment, I release you, go have fun, enjoy your weekend, but remember your assignment two and assignment three, you, st you still need to do them. And those who haven't submitted their assignment one, you still have very few days to submit your assignment one and assignment two, which is the adju on the seventh. And otherwise, happy learning, happy weekend. I will see you on Wednesday when we do sampling distribution. On Wednesday as well, we're going to only have one hour, 30 minutes, or we, we might spend the whole two hours. I'm not sure. We will see how the session goes. But what we will do on Wednesday will be almost similar to what we have learned. That is why the session might not be as long as the other ones, because we're just going to repeat the same concept. So have a lovely weekend. I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Thank you, Miss Lizzie. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, bye.